guys, it's Nurse Jay at Nursing the Truth. I hope everyone is having a great day. Well, Nurse Jay is on a roll and she is busting through the uh, facade of the Matrix. And I am going to keep on and on and on telling people about the business of the book. So, what is right around the corner, guys? Hold on. Strap on tight. Get your pens and pencils and your books handy dandy because we are going to take a wild ride back into the past of the first century Judea and what actually happened. Now, I made a video uh, a few weeks ago about a guy named Simon of Perea. P-E-R-A-E-A. -E -A. Now, Simon of Perea, or Simon, son of Joseph. Don't you like all those Josephs? He was a former slave of Herod the Great who rebelled and was killed by the Romans between 4 BCE and 15 AD. There was no quiet time in Judea, folks. It was a massive rebellion. And uh, some of them uh, related that he had messianic uh, tendencies. Now, get a load of this. So Josephus, Arius Calpurnus Piso, Archippus, writes about him. And he talks about that he was um, a slave of King Herod's, and he was a big, bold guy, and he fought, and he burnt down the royal palace at Jericho and plundered what was left in it. Wow, I guess that was like the second time Jericho fell down, right? I thought Joshua blew the horn um, and it fell down or whatever the hell it was. But anyway, so um, he was killed. And um, it says that the Romans... Um, you know, cut his head off. And it says, um, Christians interpret the stone not as referring to Simon of Perea or any other Messianic figure, but as part of the flood of prophetic revelations. Um, but Josephus did say here that, um, he, that they cut off his head and he and before he got his head cut off, he fought hard and uh, had a bunch of people on his side. Now, this is the thing. Acts 13.1 Now, in the church at Antioch, there were prophets and teachers Barnabas, Simon called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manian, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. Okay. Barnabas, surname, I believe, was Joseph. And Simon called Niger, okay, Niger is the word for black, the color of the skin. So Simon was a black man, and you can look that up. I don't care how you slice and dice it. Look it up, biblehub.com, put his name in, Niger, and it comes up black. So, have fun with it, okay? And Cyrene is in Samaria. It's in the northern area of Syria. But this is funny. Barnabas, Joseph. Simon called Niger. And Simon 
was the son of Joseph. Anyway, I'm just throwing things out there. Niger is in your Bible. Barnabas is in your Bible. And why would Barnabas, Simon Niger, and Lucius of Cyrene be brought up with Herod and Saul? Herod the Tetrarch was the son of Herod the Great and Saul, and he had a brother named Costobarus. Now, Herod the Tetrarch is a real person, and Saul was a real person through Josephus' work. They are Herodians. They are Costobarus. They were married, and they had aunts, and they had sisters, Bernice and Cyprus. It's all for the world to see. Go to Costobarus and Wikipedia.com. I challenge you. I'm not making this up. And it will tell you about Costobarus, how he was the governor of Adamea, and who he was married to. And then under that, it tells you about Saul. And then after it tells you all the attributes of that, people question that that was the same person that was in the Bible. Just saying. But see, Josephus wrote all this. And don't you think by any stretch of the imagination that Josephus would be rubbing elbows with Saul. You know, Josephus talks about he was a Pharisee and that his family was of the high priesthood. <coughs> Do your research. So anyway, who is this Niger? But really his name was Simon. Don't you love all these tricks? I do. Because I'll go through them like a fine tooth comb. It doesn't matter to me. Simon the black man of Perea. Which is not too far from Galilee. So, I don't think that this Jesus man on a stick was a white man, blonde hair, and blue eyes. Just saying. Anyway. Guys. And gals, it's time to be edumacated, as my uncle used to say. Chronological of the war of the Roman and Jew war. And of course, let's don't forget Silas, right? Barnabas, Silas, Paul, John Mark. You know, all the players of the day. Now, remember I told you the different names that Josephus went under. Okay, Josephus was a pen name. He also went under the name of Cestius Gallus, Florus, Varus, Maximus Primus. Okay. So... Josephus actually got defeated by the Zealots, okay, in the Josephus War, Antiquities of the Jews, Cestus. They beat his ass, and they said, bring it on, buddy. We want some more. And so Josephus retracted and had to get back up. Oh, he was pissed off. And the Judeans had pursued Josephus, and um, on their return to Jerusalem, 
brought over to their side partly by force, partly by persuasion, such pro-Romans as still remained. And um, they appointed additional generals to conduct the war. Joseph, son of Gorion, and Ananus, the former high priest, who was elected to supreme control of the affairs in the city. And as for Eleazar, son of Simon, or Gorion, notwithstanding that he had in his hands the Roman spoils, the money taken from Cestus, and a great part of the public treasure, they did not entrust him with office. Now, let's see here. Now, it's so funny that you had these regional commanders of the new Judean government. Okay, so the zealots beat Cestus that was um, the Roman Empire. And they had different uh, garrisons where different people were over the head of that era. Jerusalem, you had Joseph, son of Gorion, and Ananus, the high priest. In the south of Judea, you had Yeshua, son of the high priest Sapphias, or Sephora. Um, you had, are you ready? Dun, dun, dun! Niger of Perea, who had been prominent in the action against Josephus. Jericho, Joseph, son of Simon. Lydia and Joppa and Emus, John the Essene. Oh, and the Essenes were pacifistic. Oh, some of these Essenes were militaristic, nationalist zealots. You had another one. John, son of Ananias and Gophna. And Josephus just had to write his little name in there. Galilee. Gamala and Gilantus, Josephus, son of Matthias. And that's a BS call there, Josephus. So, Josephus doesn't tell us all the names of people who were appointed the new generals. Why? Because he doesn't want to tell us everyone who's involved. So, prominent of those who had fought Cestus, Josephus. Hence, may have been these leaders included relatives of King Monobazus of Atabini. If you don't know who they, who that man is, King Monobaz was the son of King of Garus and Queen Helena of Jerusalem. Monobazus had a brother, King Azetes. And he died at age 55 in 55 AD. They were king and queen of Jerusalem. Didn't think you knew that, did you? We'll go find it and go do your homework. So when the Jewish war was coming, these people had called the Babylonian Jews across the Jordan for help and the Adabenes or Edessa or Antioch came to the call. King Monobazus, Niger of Perea, Silas the Babylonian, and Simon of Gioras. Wow. You know, when I started reading this, I'm like, well, this is your Niger of the Bible. This is your Silas of the Bible. Right? Right. So, Niger, a native of Perea, across the Jordan River, and former governor of Idumea, Silas, perhaps a descendant of one of the Babylonian Jews, had been settled in Batania, east of Galilee, by Herod the Great. Simon, we find out later, was a leader and possibly a civil magistrate in the topography of Acrobatini. Now, 
we see that the men were appointed commanders over Jerusalem, two or three over Idumea, and the other ones additional generals. When John the Essene of Western Judea waged a campaign against Ashkelon, he shared command with Silas the Babylonian and Niger the Perean. Two of the men whom we saw were named as major commanders against Josephus and therefore were likely among the real leaders. So the former high priest Ananus, who was appointed one of the supreme commanders of Jerusalem, had a taste for power, having tried to seize it illegally for several years. He was the fam he was in the family of Caiaphas. Um, when he had been high priest, he had tried to act as governor after the sudden death of Festus. At that time, ordered and killed James, the brother of Yeshua for which he had disposed as high priest by Agrippa. Now he was finally leader of the city and Agrippa's military enemy. So Ananus was Agrippa's military enemy. See, Agrippa did help the Roman army against the zealots. or against the people that were trying to break free because Agrippa was a family member of Vespasian because Vespasian was born into the Herod line because Her Vespasian's mother married into Herod the Great's family people. And that's where you get your Herodian and your Sabanus and your Flavian dynasty. And your Mark Antony and the Antoine family. So you have the Ananus family versus the rebellious Galileans. Does anything come good out of the city of Galilee? I believe Nathaniel said that. Or was it Philip? I can't remember. I'm too sleepy right now. Does anything good come out of Galilee? Hmm. So, Ananus, son of Seth, appointed by high priest of Cornarius during the time of Judas the Galilean, 33, high priest Caiaphas married the sister of the five Ananus brothers. Sakari assassinate Jonathan, son of Ananus. And 56. Ananus, son of Ananus, seizing power in the interim after the death of Festus and before another Roman governor took command, orders James to be killed. This provokes opposition, and Agrippa subsequently disposes Ananus, pointing in his place Yeshua, the son of Damnius. So it looks like here that. Agrippa the second got mad at Ananus for what he did to James. Okay. The priestly forces supporting Ananus kill Menahem, son or grandson of Judas the Galilean. So Galilee was a hotbed for national zealotry. They wanted to take back Judea from the Roman Empire because ever since Poppy the Great in 63 BCE, it has been under subjugation. And 
And then you have Nicodemus. Will that be Nicodemus? Ben Gurion? I'm thinking. So they have this war, and you have Silas, and you have Niger, and you have Simon. And they go in on the killing spree. And Josephus writes in his writings, if I can find it, because I saw this the other day when I was looking and I found this information. saw it here. Okay, here it is. I'm getting to it. So, Cestus, Josephus invades in 66. He's defeated. Um, then the Jewish population in Damascus, which is in Syria, numbering 10,000, is forced into the stadium and murdered. So Josephus really had a heyday, and he loved crucifying people. Why do you think he talks about crucifixion? Because he crucified a lot of the, the people. The military leaders victoriously against Cestus appoint original commander in the new government. So in 66, when they beat Josephus, they formed a new government and they had different people in different areas. In 67, the first attack of Ashkelon, an ancient enemy led by Niger, Silas, and John, the Essene. How do you like that? Are you liking this, friends? Because the only place that I have found Niger or Silas outside of the Bible is in Josephus' works. And Josephus is not talking about a holier-than-thou, holy roller person with Paul going around spreading a gospel. What they're spreading is a kick-ass agenda. The Jewish forces are ruled at Ashkelon and 10,000 are killed, including the commander Silas the Babylonian and John the Essene. So John and Silas were killed. It was a case of novices against veterans, infantry against cavalry, raged order against ranks. Men casually armed, fully equipped regulars on the one side, men whose actions were directed by passion rather than policy. On the other, disciplined troops acting upon the least signal from their commanders. And this is all in Josephus' works that he's saying. February of 67, without even leaving time for wounds to heal, second assault on Ashkelon led by Niger, the Perean. And Simon the Perean was a messianic figure. And then you have Niger, which his name was actually Simon. Are these two of the same son of a son? So, 
Then the Judeans are again defeated at Ashkelon with the loss of 8,000. And Niger the Perean is nearly killed. His survival is interpreted as a sign from heaven from the Jews. This is in the Jewish War 3.1 and 3.28. And so the Jews took that it was Niger of Perea that he was supposed to be the Messiah to usher in and be the winner of the war and defeat the Romans. It is written in Josephus' works that Niger is the one that was to come. Hotep and Ashe. And you go look it up, friends. When you search for the truth and you find the truth, let the truth set you free. Good day, my friends. Hope you've liked my trilogy series. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.